Hi there, I'm Black Bright again. <laughs> yeah, broadcasting out of the UK, speaking to my wonderful subscribers. And if you're first time passing, please um, like if you like my videos, share if you think they're of use to anyone else, and subscribe if you want to receive them more often. Um, today I want to talk about um, Brexit, even though it's we've had it until it's coming out of our lug holes. I mean, can we have any more Brexit? But the thing is, is that, you know, we still have to update people. And I guess that's what the media is doing, is updating. So you're getting it left, right and centre. And I'm going to add to that just by um, just telling you briefly an update that you probably already know anyway, if you're interested in Brexit. But anyway, I put my little take on it, which isn't really a take. It's just a reiteration of what's going on. But yeah, um, so basically... Boris and the EU have come to a deal. But is it any different from how it was before? That's the joke. I was looking at the terms of the deal, and it's hardly any different than what it was three years ago. So what is the point? They reckon it's not much different from the one that Theresa May put forward. So what was the delay? Honestly, I don't know what's going on. I think because... Um, Tomorrow's a deadline. I think Boris just said, look, let's do something. I've got to keep my word. Otherwise, I'm going to, um, tomorrow, I'm going to have to walk with my tail between my legs. So I've got to come up with a deal. Whether or not it's deferred, we don't know if the DUP is going to agree. I doubt it very much. So it could still be deferred and the Ben, whatever it is, is will come into force. But let me just... Um, Right, I'll just share my few little notes so it's a bit more organised as opposed to me ad-libbing and so an agreement has been reached it would be time for Parliament to have its say the Commons is expected to sit tomorrow which is Saturday the 19th of October the deadline to vote on the deal however the Democratic Unionist, Unionist Party the UP are still holding out because they object to Boris Johnson's acceptance of custom checks at the point of entry of Northern Ireland so that's that's put his, a bee in his bonnet and he's kind of saying well he's just rushed it just to get it over and done with and he probably did because he know I think he wanted to keep to his word he didn't want it to be seen as though he hadn't done anything, so this is what he's done. So the EU and the UK have worked on the legalities of the deal, but it will need the approval of both the UK and the European Parliament. <coughs> Boris Johnson will need the support not only of DUP, but many of the former colleagues he expelled from the party. It's a bit sensitive, isn't it? Just to go grovelling. And perhaps a dozen or more Labour MPs, which could be a challenge. This could be the final chance to secure a genuine Brexit. Anyway, the current situation is that there are currently 287 voting Conservative MPs. The Prime Minister needs to limit any controversy and obstinacy, because sometimes it's just ego and obstinacy that's going on. It's a bit childish because you've got people's welfare and people's futures, you know, on, on, on ransom, really. Anyway, he's got to secure as many as he can. If the DUP refuse to support the deal, he'll need to the backing of 23 former Conservative MPs who are currently independent. So I don't know how easy that will be. And we're not sure how many will support the deal or how many will abstain. And then we've got Boris will also need the backing of some Labour MPs and ex-Labour independents to make up the numbers. There is a possibility that some MPs could abstain, making it hard to predict the outcome. But what's the deal? Most of the deal is the same as the one agreed by Theresa May last year. The main change is the Northern Ireland proposal. And that's why the DUP is sticking their feet in, or sticking their, yeah, I think they say sticking their feet. I can't think of the phrase. What good am I, eh? Anyway, the UK will continue to abide by EU rules until the end of 2020 and possibly longer to allow business to adjust. So we're in the same situation there. That's not going to make anyone happy, especially Farage. The UK will still pay an estimated 33 billion divorce bill. Well, that was inevitable anyway. They're not going to get off scot-free. 
uh, the right of EU citizens living in the UK and UK citizens in the UK will be in the EU will be guaranteed, which is good news for EU citizens and EU nationals. Um, Northern Ireland will be aligned to the EU single market. I'm sure they'll be pleased about that. The controversial backstop that critics feared could have kept the UK in a customs union with the EU indefinitely has been removed. So that is a good result. Northern Ireland will instead remain a part of the UK's customs territory. So it will be included in any future trade deals struck by the government after Brexit. So that's good. The Northern Ireland will also remain at entry point into the EU's customs zone. I think they'll be pleased about that. The UK will not apply tariffs to products entering Northern Ireland as long as they are not destined for onward transportation across the border. I think that's quite reasonable. The Joint EU Oblique UK Committee will decide which goods are at risk of entering the single market and the UK will collect EU tariffs on them on behalf of the EU. Don't know much about that. The Northern Ireland Assembly, which has been suspended since January 2017, will get a vote every four years on whether to continue with new trading arrangements. Well, I hope they're pleased with that. I don't know. The decision would be based on the simple majority rather than requiring a majority of both unionists and nationalists to support the rules in order for them to pass. If the DUP doesn't agree, Boris Johnson could be defeated tomorrow when the DUP's 10 votes could be critical. There's always something, isn't there? Why can't it just be straightforward? But it, it's just too easy. They've got to create... I mean, somebody should write a book about this, honestly. Um, and if that happens, that could trigger the Ben Act, forcing lengthy delays and could encourage some opposition MPs to trigger a motion of no confidence, paving the way for a general election. And of course, I had to look up the Ben Act. I thought it had something to do with Tony Ben, but according to Wikipedia, it should not be confused with the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018 or the European Union Withdrawal Act 2019. It is an act to make further provision in connection with the period for negotiations for withdrawing from the European Union and got the Royal Assent on the 9th of September 2019. The European Union Withdrawal No. 2 Act 2019, also known as the Ben Act, after its parliamentary sponsor Hilary Benn, is an Act of Parliament that requires the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom to seek an extension to the Brexit withdrawal date, currently scheduled for the 31st October 2019. Isn't that the same as Article 50? Maybe it's not, I don't know. In certain circumstances, the main provisions of the Act are triggered if the House of Commons does not give its consent to either a withdrawal agreement or leaving without a deal by the 19th of October 2019. So that's why it was all rushed through. The Act proposes a new withdrawal date on 31st of January 2020. That's not far though. October, November, December, oh, yeah, it's not far, it's only three months away, which the Prime Minister is obliged to accept if the proposal is accepted by the European Council. The Act also contains provisions that detail the course of action if an alternative date is proposed by the European Council, requires regular reports on the progress of any negotiations between the EU and the UK, and sets out the format of the letter the Prime Minister is required to send to the President of the European Council, should he be required to seek an extension. It also removes, we're talking about the Ben Act, it also removes the discretion of the Prime Minister not to amend exit day in response to an extension. The Act was what given Royal Assent on the 9th of September and commenced the same day. So it's just been, it's just been um, approved. Yeah, not long ago. 
The bill was proposed by opposition and backbench MPs after Boris Johnson became Prime Minister. It was passed after they took control of the parliamentary agenda in the run-up to the controversial and later ruled void prorogation of Parliament. The government fiercely opposed the bill and Boris Johnson has repeatedly referred to the Act as the Surrender Act. The government has been suspected of examining options on how to nullify the Act's effect. So what are MPs saying about the deal? Well, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn said the deal sounded even worse than the one negotiated by Theresa May and should be rejected by MPs. Cabinet Officer Minister Michael Gove said the government should hold a vote on the deal and was not contemplating defeat, adding if the plan did not get the backing of MPs, the alternative, the alternative was leaving without a deal. The EU chief negotiator, Mike Michel Barnier, said he and Mr Juncker have been told by the Prime Minister that he has faith in his ability to convince the majority he needs in the House of Commons. Brexit party leader Nigel Farage called for the deal to be rejected by Parliament, saying it would mean we will, be making our, we will not be making our own laws in our own country. Did you ever, though? Liberal Democrat leader Joe Swinson said the next few days will set the direction of our country for generations and I'm more determined than ever to stop Brexit. So the thing is, is that anyone who needs something from someone else is under obligation and has to compromise. You're not independent. The UK is not independent. They need stuff from the EU, so they're going to have to compromise. So it's fine saying you can't make your own laws in your own country. But if you need something from someone else, how can you? You need to compromise. And this is what has happened. I don't know how much of a compromise it is. But anyway, MPs passed a law in September that requires the PM to request an extension. Oh, that's the same Ben Act. OK, so that's it, folks. I hope that it was useful. You can let me know or if it's more of the same. Bye-bye.